Let's talk, though, first of all, about Manchester City. Um, investigated this week for 100-plus alleged financial breaches. No point in guessing the outcome or, indeed, the possible punishments if found proven. Um, but Pep Guardiola has said this week, we've already been condemned. Well, not by this show. We'll wait to see what the outcome is. However, after that press conference this week, Merce, did it strike you, you know, that when he says... Um, uh, that 19 clubs are up against Manchester City. Is that all about trying to create a siege mentality? It's us against not just one or two clubs, but everybody. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I've, I think, you know, as Pep Guardiola said, you know, he'd be disappointed. He, he's confident, and, and, I, and that's the way I read into it. I think they're trying to get that way because of the way they're playing and the, and the results recently. And hopefully that'll be... But that's not Man City. Do you know what I mean? Man City don't play that way anyway. They're not going to go and kick lumps out of teams. Do you know what I mean? They're just going to keep on playing the same way. But, yeah, I mean, my worry would be Pep Guardiola. You know, because Man City without Pep Guardiola, I don't care who the players are there, it won't be the same team. Hmm. Well, he said during the course of his press conference, I am not moving from this seat. I want to stay more than ever. And yet Clinton in January in Spain... Newspapers there were reported as Pep saying, and this was Spanish newspaper report, if we get tired of each other, I am not going to stay until the end just because of my contract. Um, so sort of contrasting messages there. Um, Pep's been there a long time. It must have crossed his mind. He has, but he signed a new contract. It probably has crossed his mind because he's won everything, but the one thing he hasn't won is the Champions League, and I think he wants to get that on his CV and winning that, at, obviously, at Man City. So I, I, I can see Pep Guardiola staying there. I think all of this stuff that's going on at the moment just spurs him on even more, spurs the team on even more to go and achieve what they want to do, which is win the Premier League and the Champions League. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think Pep stays there. And listen, you can always see on the touchline body language. Sometimes he looks frustrated figure, but that's because he's disappointed with how his team are playing at the moment. But I can see Pep Guardiola here for at least a few more years. I mean, we'll, we'll come on to that in, in a moment or two, but I was just wondering, you know, we, we talk about siege mentalities, Tim. Do, do players respond to a siege mentality these days? I mean, will the Manchester City players, when they go against Aston Villa, say, Whoa, you know, they're one of the 19, we're going to try extra hard? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think they need to. I think they've got the best squad of players. You know, Chelsea might argue that, that they're right out there, but at the moment, there's something not right there at Man City. Um, I think Pep's very clever in coming out and disarming the, the British press, press really about his, his speculation on his future. You know, are you going to stay? You know, all the speculation. I think he was very robust in his defence of his, of his chairman and, and the owners of the football club. Um, and like you say, they're, they're innocent until proven guilty. So it's going to be a long drawn out affair. I'm sure it is. But in the meantime, he needs to get it right on the pitch. And at the moment, there's something not quite mm. right with Man City. Yeah, it was interesting that the one individual's name that he dropped into it was Daniel Levy. I mean, you know, I don't know whether it had words, you know, at the Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> Stadium the week before or whatever. But, no, you, you, you're right. I mean, there's clearly something not right, isn't there, Dawes? I mean, let's start with, with that game. And we know that Yao Cancelo's gone, which a lot of people were surprised by. Um, he didn't start with Kevin De Bruyne against Spurs. He said it was for tactical reasons. Right. What could those tactical reasons be? Well... Um, he must have seen something in the week, week building up that, that none of us see because I just can't get my head around Kevin De Bruyne would get any, in any team in the Premier League I honestly believe that I think he's um, he's the best player out there that creates chances which something the last week didn't see Man City do I thought it was going to be a tough afternoon for Spurs but the, the way they set up uh, and it was calling for s someone like him he looked frustrated I suppose every player is going to be frustrated when you're not playing but you don't expect to see him on the touchline. We know no midweek game. You think he's going to play um, because, as I say, he creates chances for for Haaland, unlocks defences where I didn't see last week, and there just seems unrest. I was surprised when Cancelo left. You see where they are. Um, something doesn't seem right at Manchester no. City at this moment in time because for me, he has to play. He would get in any team in the world. Of course. Mm. Absolutely. So, and you know, of course, Kevin De Bruyne is the, the highest profile absentee, if you like. But Sue. He didn't start with, you know, the likes of Laporte or Diaz either and has repeatedly not started with them as well. And they've been outstanding from over the last couple of seasons. Do you understand that? 
Yeah, not really, no. I think we we all know that Manchester City, because they've got such a, a strong squad with, with top quality players, that, that they can rotate and he does rotate and, and that's what he'll do. And if a player comes in and, and plays well, he then sticks with them. And I think, you know, it's it's obviously a luxury to, to be able to have that. I completely agree that the De Bruyne one baffles me because I feel that... When we were saying about Haaland not being in the game, not having the, the, the touches that he, he, you know, that we know that he wants and that he's making those runs, he's the one that finds him. He's the one that they, they link together so well. And we've seen that um, throughout the season. But yeah, I just feel that Manchester City just aren't at their, their absolute best at the moment. I think that's because they've set the bar so high. They've set these standards that when they drop a little bit, we question and we say, well, well why is this this happening? But they just don't look as, as fluid as, as what they normally do. But saying that, we know that they can still go on a, an incredible run. But I think with Arsenal dropping points on Saturday, I personally thought that they would then go and beat Tottenham and then they would then start to put the pressure on Arsenal and, and they weren't able to do that. So it'll be interesting to see if the likes of Laporte and, and Diaz come back in. I know Foden's, he's OK now. I think he was poorly. And, and will De Bruyne start as well? It'll be quite interesting to see the lineup. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist and I certainly don't want to criticise Pep, who unquestionably one of the greatest football managers we have ever seen. But Tim, Sue so mentioned Phil Foden there. What do you think's going on there? He, he hasn't kicked a ball for City in the last four games. Mm -hmm. Since the resumption, mm -hmm. he started two Premier League games yeah. and he's been subbed after 57 and 60 minutes. Do you mm. think that's maybe an issue? Absolutely. We're, we're not sure whether it's a, a fitness thing or, or a mental thing, we feel, and I think the manager's trying to protect him, but he's leaving him out and he's taking him out of the firing line for this moment in time. And I think when, when he's right to come back, I mean, he loves that football club. He's come through the academy. You know, we're very few come through at Man City because it's such a tough school. Um, but when he comes through, he wants to play. So he's not going to play unless your head's right and 100% on the game. Uh, and I think that the manager will not cut his nose off. And we talked about him leaving out De Bruyne. When we all know, when that when a manager and, and a captain goes into the opposition, the referee give the team sheets, when it comes back in, you, you're looking over his shoulder and you're looking for two players, really, Haaland and De Bruyne. And if one of them is missing, and it's Kevin De Bruyne, you're delighted because almost the ammunition is taken away from Erlen Haaland, so you're missing two players rather than one. We saw that, didn't we? Absolutely. Time and time last week against Tottenham, he'd make run after run after run and yeah. nobody could And the boys, gets, you get criticised for it as well, Haaland. You're only having this amount of touches, but it's not his fault. Mm. You know, Bernardo Silva is a tremendous little footballer, but he takes too many touches. They're not looking forward enough. Kevin De Bruyne has got a range of passing. And as soon as Kevin gets it, Erlen moves and he, and he invariably fires him. And Phil Foden, who they, I feel they missed him as well. I mean, they play Jack Grealish and, and Mares, and they play on the wide, very wide areas. But Phil can come in off the line and play in their pockets and allow the fullback to go around the outside. So he needs to get back. They need all their players back <coughs> as quickly as possible. They need to get a rhythm going to, to put a run together to challenge for the title. Yeah. I mean, you know, Clinton, if you look at the next... The next couple of weeks, you know, away to Arsenal on Wednesday and then Red Bull Leipzig away in the Champions League the following Wednesday. Y you know, if they were to lose those two games, well, OK, there are two legs, obviously, of the, the, the Red Bull game, would that affect Pep's thinking about his future there? Bearing in mind the financial cloud over the club, bearing in mind this is a darn hard, stressful job where every decision is scrutinised, you're every waking moment you're in the public eye, and he has been there a long time. Yeah, you're right, it's a big way. I don't think it will affect him. I think he'll make his decision come the end of the season, whether he stays or go. He will never go um, during the season, no chance. I, I, I think they'll, they'll win the Champions League games. I think they'll win them comfortably. I still think they're... Comfortably? Yeah, I actually... Because Red Bull Leipzig on beating in yeah, 18 games at the moment. Yeah, they've, won, but they've won 14 that, of those 18. But it's a different league to the Premier League, though, Jeff. It's a, bit, it's a much mm. bigger league, and I think that the standard in the Premier League is different, um, totally different. So, in my opinion, I think Man City will beat them easily. I do think they'll beat them easily. I could be wrong. I could be sat in a few weeks, and it could be wrong, but I'm going to stick to what I know, and I think City will be comfortable their big game is this weekend against Villa and Wednesday because I think if they lose that game on Wednesday I think Arsenal will go on and win the Premier League I think the gap's too big it'll be eight points with a game in hand so you're right this is a vital week for them but I think when the chips are down that's when Pep you know shows his quality and so does his players and this is a big week for them OK um, big week for them and of course we wish them well particularly in that Champions League uh, encounter